Um, I'm delighted to say Matt Williams is with us to talk about the rugby. Matt, how are you getting on? Hey, Joe, very good, mate. How's yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Um, we'll talk about Leinster in a moment. Just a, a quick few final thoughts on the European campaign from Munster's perspective. Um, there's a lot of praise for Munster around, rightly so. They, they ran one of the best teams in, in world rugby to penalties and it's heartbreaking for them to go out. Uh, so a lot of people are hoping that this is the start of something new, a kind of rebirth, uh, certainly a relationship between the fans and the team and all that kind of stuff. The one caveat to that is that we have seen brilliant one-off performances from Munster in Europe and it hasn't actually been the harbinger of a new way or a new season or a, a new level of success. That They've been kind of peaks as opposed to consistency. What's your instinct about what we're going through at the moment with Munster? Uh, rugby is a very uh, sport in general, Joe, as you know, it's a very emotional game and, and the connection between a rugby team and, and their community is, is hugely emotional and, and Munster's probably the place in the world where I've witnessed it to be the strongest, that emotional connection. And I think a lot of the reaction has been emotional. Um, I, I, let, let me also say I have huge respect for what Munster did. I thought they were incredibly brave. Their work at the breakdown, you know, putting their bodies on the line, 15 turnovers compared to six. You know, Peter Omani was was truly inspirational. Uh, it, now, but I've got to add, um, they were tactically appalling. Um, you, you know, like they should have won that game going out. Uh, Toulouse lost two backs. They only had two backs on the bench. They had a 6-2 split on the bench, six forwards, two backs, and they lost two wingers. So at times, uh, even in the last scrum of the game, uh, Toulouse were really exposed at outside centre. And even though Chris Farrell had gone through at outside centre before and put Haley over, that was the only time, that's the first five minutes of the second half, so there's almost another hour of rugby coming up, that's the only time they went at them. They kicked the ball away 70, uh, I think it's 71 or 72% of the time. Like, uh, that was disastrous. Forget the penalty shootout, should never have got the penalty shootout. Munster should have won that game. Toulouse were on the racks. Uh, um, look, I think there's still huge weaknesses uh, in, in Munster's attack. And you've got to also say, Toulouse completely unpicked Munster's set play defence. They scored a set play scrum and they scored a set play uh, line out tries. Now that's unheard of. Then Munster scored zero metres going forward with them all and their scrum was in trouble. Well, I think you've got to be, and I, I know the Munster supporters are going, oh, Matt Williams, you're Leinster and all this, shut up. Look, I do think you've just got to be really honest. I thought it was hugely brave. I thought Munster should have won. But I also thought there were massive, massive problems that were, that were exposed there by Toulouse. And, and here is the plus for Munster. Despite all of that, despite all of those negatives, most other teams would have been beaten by 20 or 30 points by Toulouse, and Munster weren't. Munster have what other teams don't have. They, have they, they understand Europe and they have the courage and commitment that requires to win in Europe. That's the basis of getting ahead in Europe. And a lot of clubs don't have that. You saw Leicester don't have it. Munster have it but they're still a long, long way off technically and tactically and personnel-wise. Right, that's interesting. So cause I was just about to ask just until that last couple of words about the personnel at Munster, that do they have the personnel that they're just being coached the wrong way, but you think that it's the tactical approach as well as some of the players that they fielded on Saturday? Oh, look, you know, I, I just think if we're talking about the long run, I thought, that, mm. you know, I'm not taking anything away from Munster players out there. Well, there's, there's two separate issues here. There's the courage and commitment and, and the incredible admiration that all of us have for what Munster put in on Saturday. And then you're asking me about the long-term future. They're, they're separate issues. The long-term future is Conor Murray and Peter Omani are coming to the end. They are brilliant, brilliant rugby players. Peter Omani was immense. But they're coming to the end of their careers. And that's, that's no one's fault. That's just the reality. They're losing De uh, uh, They They have... And you've got to say Keith Earls is knocking towards the end of his career. So there's three all-time Munster grades coming to the end. They've got to be replaced. Casey's a good player. They've got some good back rowers. Their problem comes around 10, 12, 13. They don't have an axis there that has produced any penetration or any success against great teams. Some of that is uh, tactics, in my opinion, as I just said about their inability or their, their, their 
on-field choice to not attack to lose at the outside centre position where they have been vulnerable. This goes back two years. When when Munster lost to Toulouse at Thurman Park to, uh, last year, in the first half, Dillonde absolutely ran over Zach Holmes who was playing 13. He was a 10 who was playing 13 in the first half. He made his life a misery. Second half, they stopped doing it and they lost. They, if they had kept doing it, they would have won. So there are on-field tactical and technical decisions being made that are poor. And and I, I don't see, what, while we see some great young um, Munster back rowers and second rowers and forwards coming through, Craig Casey's a plus, we're not seeing those three quarters. That, that, that's where they desperately need it. And you've got to also say their scrum is, is really in trouble. So that, that, they've got to fix those problems because that, that what they're doing gets them to this level every year. They're getting around the quarters to semis every year because they're months, because they get it, because they understand it, that connection. But to take those next steps, that's really hard. And, and they're not there yet. Maybe, you know, would they have a giant South African second row to come back into the team that will help a little bit sure. with, with the power of the forwards and we'll see sure. we'll see what Mike Prendergast can do you know somebody who understands the history and tradition and when they're falling back on that history and tradition of kicking he's trying to try and break them out of that by saying I, I'm, I, am, I am of you I know exactly why you're doing that but let's not do it anymore let's do something different so um, hopefully Mike Prendergast can be the kind of catalyst for that change and the next coaching ticket can improve things a bit can I, can I just put a really big cautionary note in on what you're saying there? I, I have, Mike Prendergast is a great signing. Um, months and months ago, I was talking to Alan Quinlan. As soon as I heard uh, that Coach Van Graham was going, I said to Alan Quinlan, you know, is, is, Mike, is Mike Prendergast coming back? That's who they need. He's a great, you know, he's really done his yards over in France. He's been away for a decade. He understands a big picture. He'll be great. And, and he's a wonderful signing. This is not... We, we've got to stop laying this at the feet of the coach. We've got to stop. This is what Munster have done for years. Let's 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 keep, you know think of the number of coaches that we've said this about at Munster. It's more than a handful, more than more than five now, and that's an error that Munster are doing. This sits with player talent and player on field decision making, and and it, we've got to stop talking about the, the Munster crowd. The Munster crowd are incredible. Like that was amazing, pumping out the cranberries. I was sitting in the in my lounge room here in France, gun. That is just I was laughing and I was singing along. So that's just fantastic. That's not gonna win it. That's not gonna win it. That's not gonna change much. It's brilliant. It's sensational. They gotta have talent in their players that can go out in the field and put into place what the coaches had. You could you could see Coach Van Grand after the game. He was destroyed. His dream was over. I, I get it. I've been there. I, I've really felt for him. But this is not about coaches at Munster. Of course, coaches are super important, but it's about the talent of the players and the decision making on the field that has been wanting. And then until that is changed, we're going to keep talking about the same things. But they've got to front up to it. They've got to stop coming back and saying, oh, we've got the supporters, we've got this. They have, but they haven't got the talent and decision making on the field. And that's what wins Europe. Brian O'Driscoll was, was talking to us last Friday saying Leinster need to win it now. This is this is it, right? There's like that. Uh, whatever previous years have been issues and I, I, there was a bit of an excuse in that COVID had robbed them of the points that they would have got against Montpellier and so therefore it was an away quarterfinal which was, you know, not really fair considering um, how well Europe, how well they played in every game but they're over that now and there's literally no more excuses for them. You know, the they have the full deck to deal with and it's an Ireland deck and so it's Ireland in the European Cup semi-final against Toulouse. Um, so it, it, it's not now or never but it's definitely now, right? It's, they have to win it this year. If you think Toulouse have won it more than anyone else, they've got five stars. The competition's been going for 25 years. You don't win this competition every year. Right? It's too hard. It, it is a super hard competition to win. And to win it, the stars have got to align. You've got to have everything in a row. And sometimes that's a good draw, bad draw, you don't win it. Injuries, all that sort of stuff. Leicester are in a really good position. There's, there's a couple of parts to this. First of all, they have performed so brilliantly in the United Rugby Championship that about a month ago, or maybe more, 
uh, probably six, seven weeks ago, Leo could see this and his staff, and they planned to withdraw their players from the last two matches. And Leo was always invested in his youth and believed in his youth and just said, no, we'll, we'll get losing bonus points. We'll, we'll go down and get something down there. And he took his kids away, left his European team at home with Stuart Lancaster and was brave enough to say, we'll still finish first by doing that. And that's brilliant planning. So, so my point is, Leinster have brilliant off-field planning at the moment. They've let their players at home. Here's the other part. With two weeks break, Leinster were rusty at Wolford Road. That's If you're a Leinster supporter, that should be music to your ears. They were rusty. They are going to be a lot better this week than they were last week. And their aim is to peak at the final. I bet you you won't see any of these final players in next week's game, playing any other games. There won't be any. They don't have to worry about it. That's what I'm, I'm getting at there. Their planning is so good. They don't have to worry about the week between. They will go to the... Go, if they win on Saturday, they will go and peak. And that's their plan. Leo knows this is... The, the stars have aligned for this year. They haven't drawn an away uh, semi-final like they did last year and they haven't got Saracens at their peak like they did two years ago. Toulouse are a little bit wounded. They've got some injuries. Uh, certainly the papers here, they reckon there's three players in doubt and they're backs. So I, I think Toulouse and, and uh, are, are a little bit weak. And they played La Rochelle in the top 14, then they played Munster, and now, and now they've got Leinster away, two away games at the Aviva. That is difficult. So, yes, I agree with you, The stars are aligning. It's not now or never, but it is now. Uh, I still am a little bit haunted by the time Toulouse came over with what was apparently a rubbish team and the ball bobbled off the top of the post and bounced down and they were two tries up after about eight minutes. You're like, what the hell happened here? And I think Leinster still won that game, but there was definitely... Uh, uh, this is not the straightforward thing that we thought it was going to be. And it's also a French team which has two of the most mesmeric, talented nine and ten we've ever seen. Like, they're literally as good as anything that's ever happened in world rugby. Now, they're not at the peak of their form just at the moment, and they're looking a little bit human when when you get at them. Uh, but there's there's just enough for us to think this is not the gimme that the bookmakers would have you believe. Uh, oh, it's certainly not. Certainly not. Um, I think it must deserve a lot of credit in how they uh, bottled up... Uh, Antoine Dupont, and, and, and just for your listeners there, great players change, great attacking players change defensive systems. So the sl- slight defence came in because of the great Mark Eller uh, in the 1980s. 20 years ago, George Gregan and Matt Dawson were running from scrum half. They were great scrum halves of the past, just like Dupont is. So defence changed to stop George Gregan and, and Matt Dawson by the first arriving defenders, one, two, and three, not moving. They just got there and stayed in position and came forward. That changed over the years because what happened, the defence made scrum half just pass, pass, pass. Dupont's come back to running. And he was picking up because the defence was was moving out at one, two, and three. That's where he was making his breaks. Munster put their one, two, and three defender and they didn't move. They just came forward. They shut down Dupont. Take take my hat off to him. It's great. But it's, this is where people say, oh, it's modern. The defence that Munster used was what we were coaching 20 years ago, 25 years ago. So it's not, it's not, it's not whether it's you know old school, new school. That's crap. What's effective? That was defence of defensive system of 20 years ago, and it was effective. Leinster will have gone to school on that. Still, the, he, here's how brilliant Dupont was. With a, a, a minute to go, Dupont kicked the ball dead, deliberately kicked the ball dead. What does that mean? There's a scrum where he kicked it. it was kickable and to lose scrummage Munster off the mark. Referee Pierce didn't give a penalty, and he should have. His, that's his genius. He deliberately kicked the ball dead in the heat of battle, knowing he'd give away a scrum with a minute to go to get a shot at penalty. That, that's, that's a genius player. Like, that's how great he is. But, but you're right. To lose are wounded. Leinster are well-rested. They have everyone in. They've just had a great away game. They've got a phenomenal record at uh, at the Aviva. So, but but to lose, you don't have to lose Beaton to you singing the song back in the change room. They're a great club, great history, and they they, they win games. Rana Gara said it the other week. They, they just find a way to win games when they can't. And and th- this will be another week where they they shouldn't win, but they shouldn't have won last week either. So there's no there's no way Leinster or anyone will be writing them off. 
Do you have any concerns about the second half performance against Leicester or was that just how sport goes? The team is 20 points up. That game was definitely over at halftime. There was no way that that Leicester team were going to score 20 points and there was no way that Leicester weren't going to score in the second half. So is that, is that just the ebb and flow of a match or was there stuff that you were like, oh, hang on a second here? No, I, 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 I what I was worried about, I actually thought they would struggle in the second half. I had to, I had to start well because they haven't played for, together for a long time. And they've had, and so, so when you when you give guys a rest, which this is really smart from from Leo and his staff, you you said rightly, Jer, that um, you know this is Ireland playing. When you go through the Six Nations campaign, even one as good as Ireland had or a winning one, you are exhausted. There's no you're, you're traveling, you're training. There's stress. There's mental stress. You're not your home. You're eating, you're eating hotel food all the time. You just can't wait to get back to your own bed. That, 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 that's what really what you're, it's Martin, it's great fun as it is. So they left them for two weeks. They recovered, and that was brilliant. And they prepared. But what it does mean you've got to play games. So I knew, or I believed, there would be a lull in the second half for Leinster, and I didn't want Leicester to be close to them. And as it turns out, uh, they, they they scored enough points in that first 25 minutes to, to uh, give a cushion through the game. But L- Leinster will be better for that game. They, they're getting their game their game heads on. They've got the, the, you can train as much as you like, but there's nothing like playing a game of rugby. They'll be better for that. They've got a strong bench. Toulouse having a phenomenally strong forward bench. Be interesting to see what they select later in the week. But no, I actually think Leinster will be much, much better this week than they were last week. I remember a headline before the Champions Cup final last year where there was speculation that it could have been the two heaviest packs of all time going up against mm. each other, club rugby-wise anyway, in that final. A team that had beaten Leinster and obviously uh, a team in Toulouse. We know what the reasons are for Leinster's defeats over the past two, three seasons. Will that not be a big factor this weekend and a potentially decisive factor this weekend? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a really good question. It's a question that goes around a lot in rugby circles. I'm not a subscriber to the theory that Leinster got can't handle big teams. I'm not a subscriber to that. I, I'm a subscriber to because the week before, and here's the evidence. A week before last, we're talking about last season. A week before at Sandy Park, uh, at Exeter, Leinster took on a renowned pack that play very, very uh, abrasive rugby and beat them in one of the best performances I've ever seen. Sometimes when you go out in a semi-final, it's, it's just, just not your day. You don't play well. I think this Leinster team are haunted by losing to uh, Saracens two years ago and losing to La Rochelle last year. And I believe that is a fuel that is driving this. They know they stuffed up. They know it. So let's not, not take anything away from, from Rona Gara's La Rochelle. I'm not trying, trying to do that at all. But Leinster in the second half stuffed up. They lost their way. And they know that. They're an honest group. And they, they're not coming out and saying anything. They're not bragging. They're doing the right thing. They're keeping all their, their information to themselves. But they know they were the architects of their own downfall the last two years. I would be very, very surprised if that happens again this week or next week. This is or in the final, if they make it. I think this is a team that has really got the bit between the teeth. They got anger in their in their in their stomachs, and they have something else. It's not about this. This is what I mean, and I'm not being derogatory to the Munster supporters. This is something that you can't get from the grandstands. You've got to have it burning in your guts, and that is we stuffed up. We knew we could have done it. We didn't. We don't know how many more chances we got. Let's grab it. And that's and and then you've got the staff doing a great job. That, that's what I'm saying. Some years the stars align, some years they don't. And this year, this, this year looks really good for Leinster because this team is angry about what's happened in the past. And uh, they're not saying it, but I can promise you that's the case. And and I, I'm very I'm very um, confident. Not the right word. I just think because I've I've lost the semi final. I've walked into that. I walked into a semi final. Thought we could win it. We didn't. So I'm I'm not saying that I'm confident. I I'm just saying what I'm seeing. This is a Leinster team that really, really has the bit between its teeth for this year's Heineken Cup. One last question for you: What's the jersey over your shoulder? Oh, that one. That's uh, uh, that's um, 
the Balmain Tigers from Sydney. It's my um, rugby league team in Sydney where I was a, uh, a boy. They were my, I was a hero. And uh, during the bushfires, the terrible bushfires last year in uh, Australia, as you all know, and um, they're, they're asking people to give money to the bushfires and a guy, um, a guy, a former player, wanted to uh, auction off his jersey. It's signed by all my childhood heroes. Ah, nice one. Yeah, and uh, so he was given it on. I didn't want to see it go somewhere that wasn't a good Balmain Tigers home where mine is, and I, I gave him some money for it, and that, that money went to the bushfires fund for the south coast of new south wales and uh, i got i got the autograph of uh, all my all my heroes from when i was a boy and it's so funny I'm, that they're the australian national team colors as well well yeah pretty much it's more gold it's more gold and black than green and gold but that's the same jersey yeah yeah it's, the same. it's a wonderful traditional jersey um so uh, i'm oh, this is in france i've got nothing of my rugby uh days or from uh, from my childhood here and where i live in france so I got, I got it sent across and I got it hanging up on the wall behind me, much to my wife's complete displeasure. <laughs> well, uh, you know, everybody needs just a little portion of their own life, a little bit of yeah. space. That's what yeah. we need. Matt, good stuff. Time. Good to see you guys. Great to talk. Thanks a million. Cheers. Enjoy the games of the weekend. Bye now. Bye. Matt Williams giving us his thoughts there. Um, one thing about that semi final last year, obviously, there was no Sexton, there was no Gibson Park. Uh, it's, a, it's a slightly different team now. There was no Kalen Doris. Uh, they're all important. I forget about that. They're all significant <coughs> changes. Andrew Porter was on the bench and wasn't fully fit as well. So, yeah, that, um, that pack has transformed. That's the thing. Like it's not. It's not the same.